we've had a delivery of shelter bolt trees so I'll be putting them in today so I thought it might be interesting to film uh, what I've got and where they're going and why so a little bit about shelter belt design so I'll just show you what we got so this is 50 common older I'm really pleased with them they arrived on a pallet yesterday um, I actually ordered bare root but they arrived in pots so yeah that's uh, that's a lot of tree for the money we've got there um, they're about 18 inches high they're really good condition beautiful uh, it was quite windy yesterday they were out here in it there you know there's no burn or anything so you know they're not too tender so yeah we'll get them into the ground today um, but with them actually having root systems already um, yeah they're going to do very very well this year uh, these are nitrogen fixers so they fly up they're really good pioneer species um, because they fix their own nitrogen they don't actually struggle from uh, grass competition so for a pioneer tree or a windbreak tree um, it's really useful because other than you know a bit of old protection you can just put them straight in um, and yeah they'll thrive so where they're going is down this edge here and a little bit across the bottom now that way there is north and we get some pretty cold winds coming in there and you can see that we've got the chicken system which will uh, eventually be more of a, a rotation system with uh, a deep litter growing um, yeah, you know annual veg things like you know potato crop and things like that but uh, yeah it's a bit exposed down this side now we've planted literally hundreds of trees and shrubs down along the corn you know along the edge at the bottom and up this side uh, they're a bit on the small side but they're in there um, and yeah hundreds and hundreds of them so uh, this lot's going to go in to reinforce them now i'm going to plant these specifically down here because we've got let me show you just plenty around from the car park up to the barn there's a double row of italian alder and they've done incredibly well uh, for all the reasons i've already said with nitrogen fixation and so on and those they're just going to go um hang on we're already stepping the shadow here we go and they'll go full height trees and be the outer skin of that shelter belt there now that land there is full of rushes it was very wet when we moved here because we take all the water off that barn it's not our barn but we do get the water off it which wasn't ideal just straight above the house so we've done a little bit of uh, earthwork remediation um, and none of that water runs down there now there's very little it all gets shunted sideways and gets cascading down through various earthwork systems so the rushes there are looking really unwell and yeah the italian alder will just punch straight up and create a really nice outer skin now around here i can't do that because we've got the phone line i've got to keep below that now italian alder is amazing and it's a drought tolerant alder uh, so as that land behind me goes through succession um, it'll cope very well um, being drought tolerant uh, in the, the few years until it gets its roots really down to the point that it's just not an issue and it's probably approaching that now they've done really well um, but yeah in a dry year we haven't got to worry about them whereas these are just common older black older european older it's the same same type um, yeah uh, so the ones the issue with the italian older is they don't copy some pollard very well whereas these ones really do so we've we're, we're sacrificing in one way and gaining in another uh, but i'm really pleased they should do absolutely fine if we have a drought in the first couple of years i might have to give them a little bit of help but they should be fine um it's not really likely um and yeah bare root trees going in um yeah they're particularly susceptible to that in their first year with these being you know already pot grown they should be okay um i have to see what the roots are like make sure there's not too much circling because obviously you know that's not good for trees but they should be okay uh you know everything else we've had from this company has been really good so i'm, okay, I'm expecting them to be pretty healthy um so yeah so they're going to go in a single row down here i'm going to bring it in three meters so that by the time they're high enough to threaten or even come close to threatening the phone cable at that point i can just um uh, pollard them at about six seven feet maybe about six feet and let them keep doing that multi-sprout thing while developing a really big lower trunk without getting you know massively huge um, and still you know creating a huge amount of biomass and that'll give us stick wood and then every few years i can come along i can take it as a coppice at ground level um, and that'll give me either a nice big post that's about six foot long uh, about you know about as thick as my arm um 
which is really useful for any sort of uh, earthwork structures going into ponds because alder lasts indefinitely under underwater. You know, if it's in water, it just doesn't age at all. Um, another option with it is we could use it for mushroom logs. So what we'll do is we'll pick every fifth tree and we'll put it on a rotation. There's 50 trees here. So that gives us 10 trees every year that we take as a log and the, the biomass above and coppice. Uh, and the rest of it just comes on as a pollard. So we, you know, we keep the, the vast majority of the shelter belt effect still in. And this is just one line, bear in mind, because we've got loads of other trees in there as well. And there will be an outer skin going in of evergreen species eventually between the actual fence line and where uh, the, uh, the you know, these trees are. So, yeah, there'll be a nice little uh, line in there that we can, you know, get a really nice outer skin of evergreen in to really protect the system on the inside, even in winter, uh, when, you know, obviously these won't have leaves on. But uh, it'll give us a huge number of, of yields in, what, a strip that's maybe a metre wide, which is all these will take up. Uh, it'll give us a huge amount of stick wood when we take them as, uh, you know, the, uh, the coppice and the pollard sticks, as well as the logs. So, yeah, a pretty useful thing. And we know that they'll do here. So, all right, first things first, I've got to get them laid out. Um, now, as I say, I'm going to come in three metres. But also, across the very corner of this field here, uh, just the other side of this old naked looking fence, is where the septic tank is. And there's a pipe that runs off in that direction. So I've got to keep well clear of that. So that's basically from this post here down is the, as far as I'm going to go. I've got a stick here that is measured uh, with a, a mark halfway up well just towards the end there that's three meters so i know i need to be in that far from the fence because that's kind of important and i'm going to keep it a, uh, sorry that's yeah three meters in and i'm going to put them about one one and a half meters ish um i'm not going to be too strict about that you know i know from what the italian old has done that within say i don't know three four years they'll be close enough that they'll be touching when they're in leaf, which is, you know, pretty quick for a pretty dense strip of shelter belt. I'm quite pleased with that. That'll do for me. Um, and of course, it means that I'll get across across the bottom here and we'll see how many we got left and we'll see how much we can come across the bottom of the field as well. So yeah, let's get these laid out and we'll see how far they go. Look at that. Got a little hitchhiker. I think that's a little ash tree. So they both seem happy enough. We'll leave them be see what they do so I've laid them all out you can see the row of pots I'm filming this now because once they're in the ground it'll just be another stick you know it'll be difficult to see so you can see that goes all the way down to the corner and yet inside it there's all sorts of things we've got that's a, a current there we've got uh, let's have a look that's a hazel Obviously, there's a pine tree there. It's just uh, it's just a pioneer, you know. It's not anything that's going to be there permanently, and uh, so on down the road. Um, some of these things have been in for a while. Um, as, a, as an elder, um, but one of the few that I'm concerned about is one of these here. Now, this is my black elder. I really like this tree. Um, it's a bit shriveled. We had. Uh, a full start of a spring and then everything got burned by yeah, sudden cold snap but it'll bounce back um, so what I've done here is I say I wasn't going to be you know fanatical about the spacings between them so I just soft them around a little bit so there's a little bit more space between them uh, for this and I've done that with other trees in a couple of places uh, but not too many it's worked out quite well really see there's another current coming through I couldn't even tell you which current some of these are uh, what's that I think that is a, is that a blackthorn. I think that's a blackthorn, maybe. Anyway, there's a load of trees down here, uh, and so on, right down to the corner, and then we go right in across the bottom. So I'll just show you how far across it goes. So we're at the end of that bottom row, and you can see how far from the corner I am, and then back up to the house. So that's a long, considering we've gone from that pole there all the way down to the bottom and then all the way out to here that's a, a big expanse of shelter belt um and there's depending on what cutting material i've had at the time there's uh other you know there's a huge amount of variety in the species of shelter belt that i've put in um but there's a right here for example let's see there we go that's um 
Uh, that's gooseberry. There's another gooseberry. See, there's a load of them. See, there's another little pine tree just there, you know, and there's a whole row of them. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's this strip gone here. Well, uh, laid out. Now we're just going to plant them all. They've been pretty good. Uh, they haven't been too pot bound. This is about the worst one I've come across, and you can see that's still pretty decent. But anyway, I was just teasing these roots out a little bit, and I came across. Well, I don't want to do any damage to it. So there we go. See, there's a little root nodule there. Now that is what makes these trees so special. There's a few plant families that can fix um, atmospheric nitrogen and uh, you know use it to speed plant growth, use it as its own fertility fertilizer. Um, there's the legume family which you know things like clover and stuff and you can get uh, various legume trees uh, but they tend to not do as well this far north. We're using some uh, but these are far more reliable and these use um, a form of symbiotic relationship with Frankia bacteria and they share the goodies with each other and they form these little nodules full of nitrogen very very cool an amazing trick so yeah I'm just gonna tease these out just a little bit there we go but generally it hasn't been a problem see if these I mean they're not you know circling round and round if they are then what happens is the tree will tend to grow very nicely for a couple of years and then as they, you know, the trunk gets bigger the roots will get bigger and as they swell up as that wraps around itself it'll actually form a constriction and then it'll choke itself off and it can kill the tree and you can you know kill the tap root of the tree doing that as well it's uh yeah it's uh just one of those things you've got to be careful of especially when you get like you know real budget trees in uh you know plant sellers and stuff that are cheap and they're really pot bound you think that's a good price yeah you gotta be fairly ruthless with the roots uh, to get them to go out and sideways again so they don't just keep circling but uh, yeah very cool so yeah they're all really high quality I'm very pleased with them all right we'll carry on planting so that's all 50 of them you probably can't make it out particularly well but it's disappearing off in that direction and then over as far as the fence and they're following it up but all at a three meters in and then three meters in from this fence and that gives me opportunities for planting another row of trees behind it. You see, there's quite a bit of stuff here already. I mean, there's yeah, that's a lot of uh, a lot of gooseberry. We've got uh, what's that? That's hawthorn, uh, which you know we'll want a certain amount of hawthorn in just for um, wildlife use, but also you can graft pear to it and a couple of other trees. So that's got you know all sorts of use, but also. In the back here, we're going to plant another row of uh, shelter belt to really reinforce and enhance this one as this goes up. It's because this can go up to full height here. We don't necessarily have to coppice them if we don't want to. We probably will uh, just to get a yield from it. But uh, but the other side, um, you know, between the uh, row of, of alder and the fence line, that three meter strip there, underneath the phone cable where we have to keep the uh, height a little lower. We're going to put probably a row of Eliagnus ebingi, which we use a lot. Uh, but as we normally use it as an understory under the uh, alder, there it's going to be a metre and a half behind it, sort of halfway between the two, so that we can still get in and we can still coppice and we can still pollard and deal with um, the alder without messing with the, uh, the ebbings behind it and keep clear of that. And that'll be a really hardcore outside um, evergreen skin that still will remain lower than the cable so it's never going to be a problem it's never going to need chopping down and that'll do quite well whereas down here we haven't got to worry about keeping it down to a, a particular height so we can put uh, a few different types of uh, holly which you know I mean that's got uh, various yields from it especially around Christmas time and there well uh, yeah that whole season uh, we can also put in things like wax myrtle, which is uh, a wax producing evergreen, and uh, we can put in pine trees, which we haven't got many really good edible pine nuts yet. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, all sorts of, you know, little pine trees, but uh, they're not uh, the edible nut variety. What we do have is a few, there's another part of the evergreen understory, that's a little juniper. We haven't got a lot more of them yet, but uh, they're doing okay. We'll see how they're doing. Yeah, they're very slow growing, but, uh, you know, 50, 60 years after I'm dead, someone might be getting some uh, some berries off them within four or five years. 
all these older would have all be touching and they'll all be up to maybe seven eight feet so yeah that's uh, a significant sized part of uh, the shelter belt completed right time for a cover <laughs> 